Okay, welcome back to uh, to our next uh, class. Um, the last time we we did talk about three specific areas as we prepare for marriage. We looked at becoming the best person in marriage. We looked at our emotional health, and we looked at personal management, mainly um, focusing on career, finances, time, and household skills. Is there any question that uh, anybody likes to raise before we address the, the next four pointers? Uh, I think there was a question in our last uh, class. So if there's anyone, you could just unmute or you could put it up on the chat and uh, we can address it or discuss that. OK, I guess not. All right, so um, even as we looked at the first three, we are going to be looking at um, another important area that needs to be addressed, which is the skills in our relationship. Uh, what are certain uh, things we need to keep in mind when we are relating to one another? So um, all of us know that relationships take work. Uh, relationships don't evolve on its own. And it requires some skills for us to be able to establish a good and a healthy interaction with people around and so much more with our spouses. So if you look at the scripture there, it's on page 17. I'd like one of you to read that out. It's Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 5. Philippians 2, 3, and 5. It's on page 17. Would someone kindly unmute and read? Don't do anything from selfish ambition or from a cheap desire to boast, but be humble toward one another, always considering others better than yourselves. And look out for one another's interests, not just for your own. The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you. So if you see in this verse, it talks about um, always being able to consider others. Okay. So considering others requires, it's, it's a skill. It's a skill. And some of the pointers that we have in, um, in this uh, in this part, I, it, it again, it's maybe not an exhaustive list, but at least the core, the important ones is uh, communication, is what are the roles in marriage, and how do we relate to those outside, um, uh, especially the in-laws or the extended family, as we are in this in in a relationship. So one of the core things, the backbone of a good relationship is good communication. Right? So uh, if, if, our, if our ability to, to verbally express ourselves, our mannerisms, our skills, um, you know, our certain, uh, certain codes of how we talk with each other, if we aren't careful of it, it can bring about a lot of challenges in the uh, in in our relationships, right? Um, being so, you know, maybe being more tolerant, being more uh, uh, patient, being kind in our speech, definitely goes a long way in the way that we are able to maintain our relationships. So that's an area that we need to look into to see how we are, um, how how. We, we do work in those areas. So when we look at communication, like I said, communication is a backbone of, of a, a relationship. And if there isn't um, an established way of how to communicate in marriage, it can definitely lead to a lot of, lot of issues. So communication, why is communication needed? Because it helps you to understand yourself as well as the other. When you open up communication, you begin to see what the other person is like, their 
their likes, their dislikes, their preferences, their choices, their opinions, their thoughts, their attitudes. Um, and without communication, you do not understand that. And a lot of times, when that is broken, when communication is broken, it leads to misunderstanding or it leads to assumptions that have uh, very strong fallouts in marriage. Also communicating not just when things are okay, but when things aren't at its best. How do you communicate when you're angry or when you're dissatisfied with something or when, when your expectations aren't met or when there is an important need uh, inside of you? Uh, how well do you communicate to express that? Also, communication would mean to, to really introspect to see what are some of the methods of communication you use, you know? Do you, uh, is, is it generally very harsh? Is it brash? Um, is it sarcastic? Is it cryptic, you know, saying things not to the point, but, you know, beating around the bush and really not really saying what you want to, but going all over? Are there uh, threats? Are there blackmails um, in, uh, you know, is that the way that, that you, you may be tending to communicate that brings you, uh, that, that wants to, you know, really share what you're going through? So going, um, finding those things out is, is extremely important. And there is an entire chapter on communication when we're looking at elements of a good marriage. One of the um, chapters is on communication. So we're going to be going through this in detail. But overall, to understand whether your, your communication needs work. The second part of, um, of relationship skills is knowing your roles in marriage. What are, what are you expected uh, to, to play in marriage? So there are, uh, there are certain roles that have been defined and prescribed for for both the man and the woman in scripture. And uh, often, sometimes it gets very hard for us to play those roles because of the kind of um, maybe upbringing we've had, the marriages we've seen, the culture we belong to. So something that, uh, so this is personal. Uh, so something that I remember, you know, in our initial years of marriage, um, uh, of course, the, our, our personalities, my husband and my personalities were very different. And um, I'm, the, I'm the kind who would, you know, any situation given to me, the first thing that I will do is attempt to resolve it. I will look at the best way to work it out. Whereas my husband took a little bit more of time, gave it more thought, gave it more um, structure. And so what would happen is, when there was an issue that needed to be handled, which was entrusted to him to do, I would often take it up because I felt that the the time taken or the what was not what was too much for my liking. And over years, I began to see that that was not a very good thing to do because I was almost usurping what he should be doing. And uh, not just uh, and and you know taking on the role that he should be playing, and so then I had to step back. I had to consciously step back, and maybe my thoughts of you know getting it done then and there in this structure, in this way, in this organization, had to take a back seat because I knew specifically that he had a role to play, and that he needed to do things his way, maybe his way, and I had to be patient with the way that he does it. So uh, scripture is clear about the role of a husband and the role of a wife. And each of this are assigned, not because of, uh, uh, you know, because he, when, when he's entrusted those roles, he, he knows that we would, you know, it, it was something that he designed for us to do so that we would work in cooperation and collaboration with one another. So to, to know, even understanding these roles is how are things in marriage being distributed as to who's going to take care of 
you know the the major earnings of the home who's going to be taking care of the of the children who's going to be taking care of the spiritual health who's going to be um looking into um, you know the lives of the children bringing up the children so these were these are certain roles that needed to be discussed because often um it it becomes colored by what you have seen and what you've experienced in your parental home or maybe among marriages outside but to align yourself to the way god sees it is what brings about a lot of joy in marriage okay and even as you're looking at these roles are you looking at a flexibility are you willing to um um complement one another through these roles stepping in when someone else may need your support and your help okay the third point of the third part of relationship skills is your relationship with your immediate family that is your in law um your parents in law so it is important to know and to discuss of how you define specific boundaries in your relationships with the other with other members in the family okay uh it it is a good practice to keep a healthy distance with family members um now what do i mean by this so the so I, i think especially in the culture we live in i've faced a lot of problems when you know this guideline has been given because for for a person it may sound as if you want to abandon your parents that's not the point here okay the point is not abandoning the point is ensuring that you cleave together in such a way that nobody decides or interferes in the in the in, at, at the core of the marriage to be able to take those crucial decisions and plans within the unit rather than having significant people take that authority they can speak into your life they can speak into and give suggestions but everything happens from this this unit in itself so um you know just knowing that often people need to cut off those umbilical cord you know that still seems so attached because uh, you know the, as as a young person as you grow up you you get a lot from your own family and you tend to go back to them because it's been a practice but it's it's a change it's a shift in the way um that you relate that you build this relationship with your spouse so that everything is generated from this union okay also guidelines of uh, uh where the home is going to be who they who you're going to be staying with um uh, you know what what kind of a support system would you need to still um uh, ensure to keep so those are some parts of it that that fo- f- falls in relationship skills okay uh, is there any we will spend a couple of minutes just to check on if there are any questions with relationship skills specifically on communication on on the roles and uh, also on the relationships with extended family members any questions here yes charles yes charles you may ask your question Charles Okay sorry Charles I'm not able to hear you um uh Samuel Hi hi ma'am sorry I'm yes. getting disconnected uh, I'm sorry if you called out my name earlier No no problem uh, So I have a bunch of questions so one is um Uh, so while i understand the aspect of communicating and how communication is a backbone to to bringing out all of these issues in front and uh, and initiating change but i mm-hmm. think i'm also thinking of how does change really happen i see some of the topics um, you know that and then i i'm thinking maybe we'll cover in the uh, in the coming days but um you know when 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 we talk about two personalities coming together and working it out you know mm-hmm. say i'm i'm a 30 year old male and all my life i have um you know the 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 culture that i was brought up in uh, the parenting that i uh, uh it's taught uh, has taught me to be very 
uh, self sufficient independent and what not so you know i'm 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 a person who grew up having my own room for so i i don't like invasion of privacy and what not you know and then um, and then now um, suddenly i'm thrown into a mix where i'm encouraged to bring out everything in the open so it would it would mean either of two things for me one is i'm changing my personality like completely i'm becoming someone who i mean in a way is i'm not you know i'm 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 kind of I, I, some people may even look at it, it as compromises which again i think uh, is what marriage needs uh, but again uh, this this di- dichotomy of staying true to yourself versus altering yourself to what extent uh, you know to kind of uh, then fit into your marriage so that is one like how much uh, does a person change and, and and that change is it is it genuine or is it like me trying a person trying too hard to to fit in a uh, b would be how does that even begin like how do you give up 30 years of practice and and venture into something new and you know so that and um the third question that i was thinking of is like like while you know uh, while someone is getting ready to marry like let's say i'm seeing someone uh i let's say i have some a, a prospect in mind um and with the limited interactions that you have uh, and especially in the context of preparing for marriage like let's say you're spending a year two years getting to know this person how much of that really does surface up because as long as you're not i mean i know i'm not <laughs> encouraging living relationships but you know unless and until you don't live you don't sh- live in a shared space you just meet for lunch meet for dinner you discuss i mean all of that to me sounds it's it's rosy and you know most of that is just getting to like it's 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 that initial dating phase uh but that that grind uh that that uh, every day it, all of that surface are only once you know people start living so how much of of it uh, can someone really prepare for uh even say you take one or two uh years uh, you know how much of it can you really you know like because um, when we are talking on the phone to a person when we are meeting a person over lunch we may not we may say all good things you know we may we, there's this element of uh, i i want this other person to like me so um, you know i'll say things i'm i'm not lie but you know i'll just i'll make sure that i don't say things to upset him or so so i'm i'm uh, i'm thinking of all of these questions Thank okay you. good thank you thank you samuel okay um so the first question you spoke about was um how having had um having had a uh, you know living through through your initial years of life in 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 a particular way begin to incorporate a different style or a different understanding uh codependence uh all of that how how do we get to do that uh now uh, like i said i think it's easier said than done however as we looked at that scripture um what we are called to do is to look into the interests of others so i keep telling people marriage is not for selfish people if um and i think we partially spoke about that the last time where we spoke about self centered individuality right so when we know that we are going to get into a relationship that is that is a sense of preparation that happens in our hearts that everything will not be like the way i want it to be so i cannot hold on to my obsession my self obsession of wanting things the way that i want to now that is something that um needs to sink in needs to dwell in that there are going to be changes in the way that i um that i'm going to going to live and and uh, you know after being married 18 years i can truly say that marriage has been the most humbling experience for me to think that maybe i knew it all i understood it all but only when i did come in relating to uh, my spouse did i begin to see that it isn't that way and it was it's more an experience for me to learn humility in a real practical sense and so much more you know i think i've learned it so much more through the marriage 
and as a result also built my humility when it comes to god right so okay now now coming to a more practical aspect of it um it it is to understand that Uh, so it it's a conscious decision um that 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 you make that whenever i'm in communion with someone who is my spouse that things are being done together and there may be there are going to be many things that will not take place the way that i want to however does that mean that i swallow up my desires or my individuality no that is why communication is there where you openly bring up for discussions about uh, very um uh, you know important things that may be causing those kind of conflicts um so I, i'm i'm going to take an example just to make this a little bit more clear uh let's say um, let's say there is there is a person uh, one one of the maybe likes their time likes their space you know likes their individual time a lot more than um than than being than than being in unison with another whereas the other person finds a lot more of um, a joy in spending their time together now we do see that both of this aren't really wrong because one is being driven by just their personal space and they they may like you know they think a lot more when they're alone but then the other may think a lot more when they are together but this can occur only in communication of being able to present and bring out what what you expect in this in the in the marriage and what you're getting and coming to a place midway of finding okay let's spend this time together maybe this time will help you so it's it's not just giving in but also understanding so that can work only through communication and uh, and and building this you know the specific elements of marriage is very unique to every couple uh so so some it may be easier because they may be more like each other some may be more difficult because they are more unlike each other but that happens only when you can communicate so there may not be any right or wrong but what really fits in for that you know that couple of how much of time they spend in together how much of space they may need for another it really depends on your individual individual personalities as well that's the first question the second question that you said is how much can you prepare and i think uh this is so uh that's exactly why uh, you know we recommend this course we recommend that people who go through uh marriage go through this course because we ask very very hard questions and something that we also do post uh, maybe the fifth or the sixth session is we actually have one on ones with each of these of the partners and we talk about things that may not have come about so which means you know we look at sexuality we look at individual um uh, past relationships we look at uh, um uh, common uh, communication patterns emotional problems that we have noticed we bring these out and we bring those back to the sessions where we hy- hypothetically bring about certain instances you know like um so i sometimes especially you know when we have couples who come together in marriage and they let's say they're from different cultures okay um i i bring up that question i said okay what if um you know in, in this is what you form in your culture like uh, the last couple that i was meeting um one of the partners had a lot of influence from the from the parents whereas the other partner uh you know she was given a free hand to do whatever she wanted and there were so many conflicts as a result of that that you know i brought that up i said okay let's let's take an example maybe you're a married two months down the line maybe his parents want to come in and stay with you how how would you respond young man how would you respond young woman and you know their responses actually opens up so much of information that they may not have spoken about like you said it's that place that you know i, w- I want you to like me more so i don't want to uh, you know shake the apple cart by asking you a difficult question and but but those difficult questions need to be asked so if there are things and that's the honesty of uh, of of being in that preparation phase you know asking those difficult questions to find out what could be a potential answer so that's as much as you know but of course there is a whole lot 
a 90% you will see face to face. But you trust the Lord and know that he's guiding you into something that, uh, that he's brought you to. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Okay. Uh, two things, if I could say. Yeah. So one is I, I really like um, marriage is not for selfish people. It's it's uh, such a I mean it's it's like a bumper sticker quote but I think yeah. it's powerful and, <laughs> and I love it I love that quote uh, that is not for selfish people I'm I'm gonna use it I think or uh, keep for myself maybe for a lot of times uh, but that that's beautiful but the second thing I'm also interested in how does change really happen you know especially in a couple like for example let's say in a couple someone does recognize like I have. Uh, these outbursts of anger issues and let's mm-hmm. say I've communicated that my partner knows it mm-hmm. um, and uh, and we both know it so we keep communicating but even then you know the, the change like like where do I how, how does like let's say point A to point B so A is I, I have outbursts of frequent outbursts of ang- angers to uh, a place where um, sorry about my background is to a place where <laughs> Um, I don't have such frequent outbursts of anger, like the journey. Uh, I, mm. I'm, I'm communicating, in, but t- t- is communication alone enough? Is, is okay. I think what I'm thinking. Is your question? Yeah, uh, communication alone may not be enough. If it's something that you're not able to work on yourself, it is good to get help for it. You know, if it is a Christian counselor who can help you through that, or a pastor, or or maybe a life group, someone who can work with you on those situations is is necessary. Again, it is not wrong to go to a counselor, even when you're facing issues within marriage, which may be tiny, which may be insignificant. Please do not. Uh, uh, keep yourself away from going to for help because it's like this you know when you have your initial headache you would go check to see what's wrong right it's the right? similar it's way the... and being able to do that really keeps you away from larger greater promises uh, problems so if there is a, um uh, if if there are certain issues you're not able to deal with within the marriage take outside help take the help of a of a professional counselor or a christian counselor or even your own pastors Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to move ahead with uh, the next three areas. Uh, Charles, you had a question. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes, Charles. Charles. Oh, sorry. You've written it. Okay. I am asking about the umbilical cord. What could the practical steps or ways that can help a spouse in cutting the umbilical cord of the other better half in family roles and management. Okay, I think I've understood your question. What are some practical ways that you can help a spouse in cutting the umbilical cord? Okay, so um, I think something that uh, that is important is, um, you know, before marriage, there could be the entire support, emotional, physical, all kinds of support, would probably come from a parental home. Making those decisions to wean that off is a good idea, especially, uh, uh, you know, you know. Uh, I think even financially, there may be times that the parental home continues to support um, uh, a, a new couple. Doing that for some time, maybe till they require it is okay, but it going on for prolonged periods of time can cause a lot of struggles, right? So ensuring that every form of independence starts, whether it be physical, it be in the means of communication, in the means of emotional support, um, in the means of, um, you know, physical assistance, all of that. Like, uh, for example, a lot of couples continue staying with their family, uh, with their parent, parents or, you know, their in-laws or, or, or their parents. And what happens is they do not learn to establish a home on their own. You know, even if there is uh, one partner, you know, going out uh, maybe on an emergency, and then there is always the support that is taken from the, from the, from the parental home. So, Every what I mean by that is a, a healthy 
a healthy detachment so that you can build that form of independence. Emotionally relating everything that happens within the home or making those decisions outside of the home with your with with your parents. Those are some practical ways that you can cut off that umbilical cord, you know, ensuring and making the choice that the support comes from within the marriage in itself and not from, from outside. I hope I've answered that, Charles. Uh, Nisha, you had a question. If one spouse disagrees for marital counseling and says nothing is wrong with him or her and everything is wrong with the other. Okay, Nisha, I think you should be, you should probably look for somebody else. Um, um, I think it is, um, you know, the Bible says it, that if we call ourselves to have no sin, you know, we are, we are in error, right? All of us, there is something not right with all of us, imperfect, I won't say not right, imperfect in all of us. So if there is... Uh, and, and the idea is to bring out these imperfections of the other and learn to understand and work with it. So if there is someone who feels there's nothing wrong with them, um, I think it is a good idea to look, have a re-look at your expectations of this person. I'm sorry, that's probably as nicely as I could say it. Is, is there anyone else who has an answer to that? Would anyone else like to bring about a, a suggestion or a, or a thought? Um, I think, um, so, Jean, what your answer was, uh, if Nisha should look for someone, I think, uh, what if you're already married for a year or two? Oh, and no, then, this is not yeah. in marriage. I understood it as when, not, he said ma marital counseling. Oh, okay, sorry, I think it's in marriage. Yeah, you're right. Samuel, so, mean, please go on, please go on. So, so I'm thinking. So obviously, yeah. So she's saying in marriage. Yeah, so you meant in marriage. Answer didn't match. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Then that my answer didn't match. Okay. If it is, uh, if it is uh, in marriage, um, it is. I think one of the things. Um, if if I want to look at it as, as different steps, one is yes, approach your spouse and ask for that. You know, this is a unit, and it needs to be worked together. So encourage as best as possible, okay? If that doesn't work, um, maybe it's a good idea to involve a close family member or a close spiritual mentor or someone who both of you can trust to bring in to the, um, you know, this, this uh, decision. Uh, the third, uh, uh, no, I think the second thing would is to maybe, yeah, like I said, yeah, a family member, and then it would go to maybe somebody on the outside, like a spiritual mentor or a pastor or, or somebody like that. The third, of course, is, you know, when you are in a place where you are not able to see any positive change, even though you've tried this, um, is bring that to the Lord, bring that to the power of the, of the Holy Spirit, because if there, if the change that can happen is the turnaround that can come when the Holy Spirit walks in. Okay, so bring it to the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to, to work. Um, and, you know, bring your specific needs to the Lord and say, God, this is what I see is working against my marriage. Bring it to the needs of the Lord and, uh, uh, you know, trust that he will do, some, do, do something. The fourth, as you are praying, is speak the word speak the word uh, on your marriage there are so many scriptures that talks about uh, uh, how you uh, you know uh, the um, one i can remember is uh, there is rejoicing in the tent of the righteous we will walk together in unity we will leave and cleave and be in one flesh just being able to uh, speak the word of god in your marriage and um, you know that th there may be there are so many testimonies and, and for want of time I, I don't think I can bring up one but there are so many testimonies of people just speaking the word and things changing for them so I encourage um, you to 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 do that do the best you can to get the support and help you need but if not speak the word 
pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to intervene. Okay. There, I think, uh, yeah, someone has, has already said it. She's experienced power, uh, uh, power of prayer in marriage. All right. I, I'm going to go on. Christopher, I will take your question at the end. I'm just going to go on so that, uh, you know, we can complete what we started. The fifth area that we would need to address is certain issues and things that have occurred in the past past. Now, when we look at our lives, there are times that many um, unpleasant things have been thrown at us. And uh, some of this is not our own doing. It is we have been victims of, of the experiences that we've been through. But specifically looking at any form of past abuse that you may have been a victim of. When we're looking at past abuse, it could be physical, it could be emotional, or it can be sexual abuse. Now, every form of abuse definitely has certain repercussions or certain experiences that, that the person needs uh, begins to deal with. There may be hurts or there may be um, uh, uh, you know, real scars that, that we live with. And uh, it is important to receive that healing from this, the from the any kind of an abuse or trauma that you have you have faced. Um, it is also to know that that no form of abuse is right is acceptable even in marriage, and sometimes because it it is something that you may have seen in your parental home or in your past um, to think that it is okay within the marriage is unacceptable. Any forms of physical, mental trauma, emotional abuse, um, uh, any kind of a sexual abuse within marriage is not acceptable. So making that, that uh, commitment that uh, none of this will, will come into, into the marriage and it will be resolved um, at any point of time that it may reoccur if it if you do find that it it has not been settled that it reoccurs getting the help that you need it is important to involve um, uh, involve trusted people rather than living in the shame and embarrassment of an abuse, right? So um, if there has been past abuse or past trauma, learning to deal with it and handling it and working in it. So there again, getting the help of a counselor to, to work on that is absolutely needed. The second uh, negative experience uh, that we need to overcome is any form of addictions that could have taken place, any substance addiction, addiction or um, uh, anything to do with relational addiction. So it could be, you know, smoking, drinking, getting into drugs, sexual addictions. All of that is something that needs to be dealt with and uh, to be ensured that you are not under any form of that addiction when you are getting married, to be able to come to a place of getting, having the freedom of that. So if it is going in for rehabilitation, going in for medical treatment, going in for for one-on-one um, -on -one counseling, that's something that needs to be looked into and not be carried as a baggage. Remember, don't fall in the understanding that addictions will all subside once I get into marriage. That is that is a foolish thought, okay? Because um, issues and problems and a lot of addictions come as a result of emotional needs. And when emotional needs sometimes are not met, uh, this is what comes in like a coping mechanism. So ensuring that these things are dealt with. The third one is any kind of environment or experiences that you've lived in. Um, maybe it's been a divorce or separation that you've seen uh, in, in the family. Maybe it is um, a probably a, a, a suicide at the home, or it could be unfaithfulness that you've seen in, in the home, uh, or any kind of... Um, uh, you know, wrong or faulty uh, uh, models that you've seen in 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 the in your family of origin. To be able to work on that, to be able to deal with that, to to understand that your your home will will not have any of these experiences or these environments, and uh, learning to work through those 
um, in a in a biblical and in a healthy way. The the fourth part of it is also any previous relationships. So relations previous relationships, if they aren't broken, if there aren't detachment from ties from soul ties, if there continues to be emotional sexual involvement uh, before the marriage, um, uh, sorry, sexual involvement before the marriage, that is something that needs to be completely broken off, uh, as well as renounced. You know, any kind of um, um, uh, affections or ties that it has caused needs to be brought under the power of the Holy Spirit to be, you know, to be uh, to, to to be completely repented of and to have a sense of <clears throat> redemption before you get in into that. So if there are any forms of guilt uh, that that you may experience, it is important again to bring that um, uh, to, to submission, you know, get, like I said, get help uh, to heal from that anger or that pain or guilt or embarrassment or shame uh, so that the, these things do not interfere with the, with the marriage in itself. Okay. The sixth part of it is sexual purity. So when, when we are looking at sexual purity scripture is very clear and we, we spoke about that in our in our last class of uh, of keeping the marriage bed uh, in honor you know treating it honorably so uh, now when we're looking at that this just uh, when we're looking at sexual purity we're just not focusing on um, sexual interactions with with an individual, but also being free of any form of sexual thoughts or addictions, or um, uh, you know, I, either in the sense of pornography or in the sense of uh, um, having sexual sexual thought processes. All of that, being free of any form of sexual addictions before marriage. So bringing all of those desires and those appetites in submission to the Lord and, and um, making a commitment to keep your body as well as your soul uh, completely um, in submission to Him, uh, freeing yourself from those bribes or those passions or those desires <clears throat> that are in contrary to God's word and knowing that those sexual needs can only be met uh, in the marriage okay now having said this <clears throat> a lot of people do also walk into marriage being prepared understanding renouncing uh, all of this when they enter into marriage do find themselves going back into those addictions or those practices um, the point is to be able to uh, um, nip it at its bud when it pulls itself up, you know, laying the axe to the root of that lust or of, of that. And, and I think, you know, we've all gone through that, uh, uh, through that course of laying the axe to the root of, of lust um, to know that it's a more deeper issue um, than, than it just being an addiction. It's a deeper need. It's a deeper issue that needs to be broken off, that needs to be cut off. So doing that right at the time when it begins to surface up is something that helps. Also being accountable to either your partner, to your spouse, or being accountable to someone who's able to walk you through this journey. Uh, you know, so if there is, if, even as many of us are married, there can be times that that we slip into into forms of sin that that we felt we would have conquered, but coming back and and uh, recommitting ourselves and doing practical things to get us back into a place of uh, holiness before the god uh, before god as we pursue pursue marriage okay the next part of sexual purity sexual intimacy to know that um, sexual intimacy happens only um, with your spouse and uh, 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 and with nobody else and also to understand the the why, why God instituted sex in itself. It was for, for enjoyment and for pleasure and for fulfillment within to bring a husband and a wife together. And it, and it is healthy when it is within the boundaries of marriage. And uh, to know, to, to be able to give uh, oneself completely um, without hesitation to, to their spouse and not withholding um, sex uh, at all as a weapon uh, you know, against your uh, your spouse. It, um, 
even as I'm saying this, I know there may be challenges for Christian couples in this area. Uh, like like, like I, I bring back communication, open communication really helps getting the help of someone who, who, who helps couples work through this very important part of marriage um, is definitely something we should not be ashamed to take. Okay, And the seventh one, the last one is Christian maturity, calling and ministry. So um, when we're looking at uh, being preparing ourselves, a big part of us is our calling, is what God has called us to do as an individual, as well as as, as a couple. Okay, so preparing yourself for two things. One is your growth, your personal growth, that um, uh, personal growth with the Lord, that even though marriage has many responsibilities, that we will not um, throw away uh, or we will not keep aside this, this responsibility of growing uh, spiritually, not just individually, but but collectively as a couple or as, as a family. So being able to uh, come to a place of talking with each other about what really enhances your spiritual growth and what and how you would want to do it in marriage. So that's, that's again, one a sense of preparation. The second, of course, is your calling. Um, even as we're looking at calling, we're, we're not, we're looking at, Three aspects. One is uh, God's calling on your life. The second is God's calling on your spouse. And the third is um, the, the, the callings that are complementary. So uh, how is it that we can walk together uh, to, to ensure that both the the individual's calling is met as well as there are complementary callings that, that, that may need to come so that you work to get things for the kingdom of God. So uh, that again is, is an absolutely important phase of discussion. So we looked at four specific areas in, in this class. We looked at our relationship skills. We looked at overcoming any past issues uh, specifically related to abuse, to addictions, to the home environment, as well as any um, previous relationships. Uh, we looked at sexual purity in being able to renounce all form of uh, uh, sexual addictions and also um, maintaining our, our purity and intimacy within marriage. And the last one was our Christian calling and our spiritual growth. So, so this sums up those seven areas that we looked into um, as a practice what what I think I would want to recommend for y'all is if you look at page um, 22 if you look at page 22 there is a little box the little little table there that helps you uh, rate yourself from one to five you know rate yourself from one to five one being the least unprepared or least um, uh, unprepared are for those who are married. Now, now even even for those of us who are married, if we score one in all, it doesn't mean you know you you quit uh, marriage. That's not what it means. What it means is that um, you know God shown you an opportunity to begin to work on your things. So one being uh, maybe least. Uh, uh, least uh, effective, five being most effective. I think I'd, I'd put it like that for those who are married and find out things that you need to work on. Okay. It's a good exercise to do. It's a personal exercise. Uh, this is not a test, but uh, it just, it just gives you, you know, you're looking at yourself in the mirror and actually asking yourself, uh, hey, um, you know, Jean, how good are you at these? Where, where are you at this? And it really helps you to build on yourself so that you can be a better spouse for your uh, for your you can be a better partner for your spouse all right quickly two three minutes of questions um if you all would have any if not um we can pray and we can close okay sorry christopher you had a question i'm just going to read that do you have cases where you would recommend that the marriage should not take place when the couple is attending the marriage planning course if so what would be the reasons okay excellent question so uh, in the years of my uh, premarital counseling at apc um uh i've i've had three couples um uh, break away their engagement okay um, uh, often okay it, it it is not not because it is recommended by us 
but because we we have we have probably told them that there are some of these areas as we have uh, noticed that requires um, work a lot more of work than what has already been put in so sometimes when they do see that uh, there there is an incompatibility in one specific area and they feel that's not something that they can work with they themselves decide to um, call off the call off the marriage there have been times that at the right time and i'm not joking um, but at the right time a day before the wedding um, there has been significant uh, issues that have cropped up and the couple have decided to call off the wedding and i believe that that one was um, you know and i remember just uh, praying a week before they were going to get married and i bought the, and as i was praying with that couple i said god if there is anything in this marriage that you see should should uh, you know is is a is a hindrance or is a deterrent for them coming together please expose it and i don't even know why i prayed that but the day before the wedding that actually that actually happened so yes there are times that uh, we may rec we usually recommend that work needs to be done because the choice is not ours we cannot um, you know we do not choose for them and say you can't get married but we recommend that there are these feature these factors that really need to be looked into and uh, we think you need to spend six more months on it and that's our recommendation so we do give that recommendation sometimes people take uh, couples do take that on and work through it some of them uh, uh, decide to to call it off. So yes, that that does happen. Okay, uh, I think Nisha has asked a question. Would soul ties with previous relationships affect the marriage between Christian couples? Yes, soul ties with previous relationships do affect um, the marriage, and that is something that needs to be renounced. Uh, that needs to be broken um, to to know what the effects of those ties and attachments have been. A lot of times when people are sexually involved. Um, there, there is a lot more uh, difficulty in detaching, but that needs to be addressed. Uh, that, that is something that does affect the marriage. Yes, it does. Uh, what can you say about Christian couples who opt to separate and come out of their marriage? Okay, uh, so, so Rose, that, that's, that's a huge big question. Okay. Um, so when we're looking at Christian couples, I think I did mention the last time when we are saying divorce in a Christian couple, what, what the Bible says is to either abandonment or adultery. These are some of the reasons uh, allowed for separation in marriage. However, even though we've said that, the idea is to build, not to break. So when people do come at that those last stages to us in our counseling center, we say that we would want to give it another chance for us to help build that marriage back. Okay, and that's what we 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 do try our very best to help them do it. However, at the end of it, it is the choice of many people of the, of the the couple on how they like to how they would want to take that forward a recommendation is given but we uh, but even if they do not choose that recommendation we do walk with them in love we walk with them in helping them come to a place of right standing with god so i cannot uh, maybe there isn't a complete answer to this there are many times uh, that you know th there are significant struggles in this decision but nevertheless this is the principle that we stand by i hope i've answered these two questions yeah okay all right okay yeah right can we shall we close with prayer i'm sure um uh, yeah we we probably overshot our time let's just close with prayer may i ask uh, somebody to pray um uh, prabhakar would you like to close with a word of prayer prabhak oh, there are two prabhakars here. oh sorry prabhakar rao would you like to close with prayer sure pastor thank yeah. you yes yeah Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. Uh, we acknowledge your holy name. We come across your throne of grace. Uh, we are so grateful for this wonderful opportunity you have provided us, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful class and thank you for uh, giving this honorable, uh, honorable time for us to learn and about this Christian family. 
Lord, I, 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 pray, I praise for you for this uh, uh, wonderful uh, learning process. We, have, we are learning so much into your, through your wisdom and through your grace. Uh, Lord, bless Pastor and uh, bless each and every brethren who are studying here. And let us uh, abide in your holy institution called marriage. And uh, let us lead a holy life, Father. And whatever we are learning, uh, let us uh, do implement in our holy lives. And uh, uh, let be uh, as the uh, partakers of the heavenly abide. And thank you for this. Uh, again, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I give all glory and honors to your holy name. And I ask this prayer in the uh, holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much and uh, look forward to meeting all of you next time. Goodbye. Have a good day. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Pastor. Thank you.